Okay. You've got your you've got your new lathe. You've probably done a bit of between center turning, which is between the headstock and the tailstock with the drive center and the uh, whatever they call it, turning center. <coughs> and you've had a little play, but you want to have a go at a bowl. Now you'll have looked on and there's been a lot of bowls made and they nearly always use one of these. A chuck. Nah, that's great, but you're talking best part of a hundred pounds for one of the cheaper ones and, uh, and way above it for the more expensive ones. But you don't have to have that. You can, you'll have got one of these with your lathe. It's a faceplate. Uh, if it's a smaller lathe, you've probably got a smaller faceplate, probably about that size, a four inch one. This is a six inch. And uh, and what a lot of turners will do with a faceplate uh, bowl turning, they'll put a piece of wood onto this, and then glue the um, the piece of wood that you want to turn into the um, into a bowl onto that piece of wood. But you haven't got a you haven't got the wherewithal to do all that, have you? You haven't got hot glue. You haven't got PVA glue. Um, to do that, but you still want to have a go. Well, it can still be done. We can fix the faceplate straight onto this. Now, this is a, a piece of 6x6x3, uh, by six by that's 150, 150 by uh, 75. Um, this is a piece of Iroko, and so what we need to be able to do is to find, because we're going to leave this one, we're going to leave it square and uh, want to find the centre to fix this onto it. So, see it there, we draw a line, let me get you a bit closer, there we go, we draw a line from corner to corner, corner to corner, that gives us the centre. Now that doesn't help you position that, but if we measure the width of that, which is six inches, we can set our compass to three inches there, and draw a circle. And that will just give us where to put the faceplate. So we just put it on that line, so we can see the line all the way around. We know that that's in the centre. So then we can screw the faceplate to the back. Uh, yeah, so I would I would recommend putting a pilot hole in, uh, but we'll assume that you haven't got one. Also, you can use a a cordless drill for drilling them in, although I do like to finish them off by hand. But what we have, do have to bear in mind later on is that whatever that comes out from beyond that piece of metal is going into the piece of wood. So when we come to hollow it out from the other side, we've got to leave that amount of wood and a little bit more so that we're not going down to the screws and, uh, and messing our chisels up on the, uh, on the end of the screws. Get those. 
if you've got very hard wood, they will be quite tough to get in and you will have to put pilot holes in. If it's a, if it's a piece of soft wood, it'll be quite easy. This is somewhere in between. So there, we've got the piece of wood mounted. So we just put it onto the headstock, uh, the face plate on the piece of wood. We're going to leave it square because we're we're making it a really easy bowl and we're going to put it on the headstock, turn it onto the headstock and just do it up hand tight which is fine. So we've got a bowl on the headstock, nice and secure. We do have to remember that the screws are coming in about three quarters of an inch, so we don't want to go any lower than that. So, what we can do now, we can bring up a bit of tail, tailstock support. I always use it whenever possible. It just adds another element of safety. So, stand out of the line of fire, just in case anything happens. It up. I like to start the machine up slowly before I take the tailstock up to it. It seems to find the centre point better. Right. Now we can bring the tool rest around. We just turn the the workpiece so that, so that it's not hitting the tool rest. But we want to be reasonably close to it still. And that's okay. So we can tighten down the tool rest, make sure everything's nice and tight. And uh, we can start thinking about turning the bowl out. Um, I don't want to come too close to the edge. So probably about there, if you get your pencil, just hold it on there. Turn the piece and mark roughly where you're going to hollow the bowl out. Right, we're ready to go. I'm using a, a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. Um, if you haven't got a bowl gouge, you may have got you may have got carbide cutters. And these are great. I'll put it on it there. And um, they're, they're really good for um, hollowing stuff out and well, all types of turning really. And they do them in, with a round top, um, a pointed detail one, and a square ended one. But if you've got a sort of a basic set, you probably will have um, a bowl gouge. If not, you may have got a spindle gouge. You can turn a bowl with a spindle gouge. There's not as much strength in a spindle gouge, so you have to be a little bit careful. Certainly if you were if you're reaching a long way over the over the tool rest, you'd have to be a bit careful with it. But you can do it. You can also do it with a scraper if you if you want to, which is one of these. And if you've bought a basic set, it will almost certainly have a, a scraper in there. This is a negative rate scraper, so it's got a bevel on both edges. Uh, but let's let's start with a bowl gouge, and we'll probably move on to the scraper. So we'll set it going. It's turning nicely. We're going up to about 800 revs per minute. And bring it in. If you, it wants to be in that orientation, 
if you're pushing in. If you're doing a full stroke, you turn it around and pull it out. I'm using light cuts, not forcing it in, just letting the, the chisel do the work. Turn it round and take that centre down. But we're leaving that piece in the middle just so that we've still got some tailstock support. But you see already I'm starting to reach a bit. I don't want this chisel reaching too far out beyond the rest. while we're doing this we we're, we're not putting our hand there, hand anywhere on this side of the tool rest because if that comes around there and cuff your hand it'll hurt. Uh, probably done as much as we can do with the uh, tail stock in place so we'll just move that out of the way and then we can bring the tool rest around a little bit. We can turn that, turn that around a bit so that it's closer to the piece. You're only ever working on this half of the piece that you're turning so the tool rests as long as it's you can reach in that piece it's okay. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Right we can start turning we'll turn the centre nub out and then start hollowing it out a bit more. Keep your fingers this side of the rest. Now you see there, my tool rest is actually a bit high. So stop the machine. You see where it was? It was there. And it needs to be just about where the center is. So we'll just tiny it up again. Take it a little bit closer. Tiny it up again. We'll try it again. See now I can reach, reach the centre and we'll turn that away. You can actually push, push it in a little bit where the centre is. So you push it in and then bring it out. Try and keep everything nice and smooth. take a bit of practice and you will find yourself come in and it will grab it you'll have the chisel in the wrong position and it will just catch a little bit 
but um, as long as you've got your hand this side and you've got your other hand down at the other end of the chisel handle then you should be fine. That tool rest just in the way a little bit. So I'm, I'm bringing the chisel around this way a little bit now so that this this point can go in. down a bit now. At this point it's nice just to double check how far we've gone down. So if you get the straight edge, it doesn't have to be a ruler, it could be a piece of wood, and just hold a pencil or something to the bottom, keep it held there, put that against there, that shows you, do it again, that shows you, or rather keep that there, I'll show you how far we've gone down. We're down to there now. So we've got a little way to go, about another three quarters of an inch, before we start to get close to those screws, which is something we don't want to do. Right, we're starting to reach over a bit now, so, so we can turn that, trying to keep it at the same level, we can turn that in a little bit, and just move it a little bit closer. So we're not overreaching too much. And before, ah, you see there? Nice just to double check that nothing's going to snag on that. So we just check that it's not going to hit. Give it a spin. If it catches anywhere, then move it out of the way slightly, like that. Right, we'll go a bit deeper now. We're going to finish it off now with a round nose scraper. 
So we'll be coming in with that and then this, this actually cuts on the side a little bit so if we come round, even the shape out because it's a little bit bumpy and it evens it out nicely and then come out to there. Best just to feel it and give you a better idea. I've still got a bit of a hump just around around there. I'm going to take that out. sanding disc on and while the lathe's spinning I would sand I would sand that out with a drill running and it makes a really nice easy job of it or you can use one of these that's um, that just works um, with the movement of the of the piece but you probably won't have got either of those so I'll just grab a bit of sandpaper like the stuff with the fabric on the back. Also these are quite good. Uh, you can get them from the certainly most of the wood turners places and they've got different grits from 150 up to 400 and just little one inch wide strips which is quite nice. So we're going to stand inside here. We do have to be a little bit careful where we're putting our hands because those are sharp points and uh, and it will give you a nasty bruise at the very least if, you, if, if it hits you. So start off fairly slow. It's uh, 400. Oops. Hold it lightly so that if it does happen to grab it, it just pulls it out of your fingers instead of pulling your fingers into the feet. Wear a dust mask. Because a lot of these, a lot of these hardwoods um, are quite bad for you. In fact any any wood just not good for your lungs. But some of the uh, some of the hardwoods, especially things like you and uh, some of the other exotic hardwoods can be, can be really nasty and you can have a bad reaction to them. So, yeah, but be careful when it, with regards to dust. And of course we will have been wearing a face mask the whole way through. Because, like I said, this has got a little split in it. It doesn't take much for that split, split to get bigger and uh, and all of a sudden you've got a piece of wood flying away somewhere and uh, if you haven't got a mask on it's no fun. Now where the end drain is you will have a little bit of tear out and it's not an easy thing to get rid of. It usually requires a lot of sanding, which is when the, where the um, where this type of thing really comes in because it moves it moves it round. Also, you can put put your lathe in reverse 
don't want to assume that you haven't got that feature so we've just got to, we've just got to stick at it for a while and, uh, and get it sanded down. I'll just go, I'll just sand it a bit more. So I'll use one of these. And it doesn't really pay to skip, try and skip too many grades. You know, if you try and skip from 80 to 240 or something like that, then you're almost certainly going to be left with some scratches in there. And you really want to get rid of the previous grit scratches before you move on to the on to the next one. If you feel again a bit hot on your fingers you're probably going a probably going a little bit fast. So you can turn it down a little bit. So that's the 120. Got a 180 here. The sanding, it can be hard if you haven't got a very good finish with your tools, with your chisels. If you've got a lot of grooves in left from when you when you turned it then it's very difficult to sand those out. So it's worth spending that little bit extra time just finishing off with a gouge, with a scraper rather, just to, just to take out all those little grooves so it's smooth through that way. Now you can spend as little or as much time as you like, depending on how fussy you are with the finish. But we'll not get too carried away today. And this is a this is, this is 240 now. Having a look at it in between each one, just to just to double check that it's uh, there's any bad marks in there. It's a three twenty grip. If you want to use a bit of press on a little bit, it's a good idea to get hold of your hand with those with your left hand. Just to just to help to hold it steady. to look nice. Got 320. This is really quite fine now.
by the time you get to this stage you shouldn't be sanding too long on each grit because it's getting quite fine and you, haven't, you shouldn't have any really nasty scratches to get rid of. Then we'll finish off with a 400. It's got a little bit of a shine already. Now we can just go around the edges. Take that sharpness and any any loose pieces off there. But we're going to keep this one looking quite rusty. A very light sand over there, and it's a good contrast between the sort of roughness of the outside and the uh, and the bowl. Right, so quite often now we'll use um, something uh, that's called uh, abrasive paste, and it's a it's a fine paste that um, that sands it from from the sort of 400-ish grade down to a really fine and it'll and it polishes it up <coughs> and then finished off with some kind of wax. Uh, you probably won't have any so what you can do is grab a handful of shavings, set the lathe going, probably about 400 and you just press press the shavings in and it just sort of just burnishes the wood with the shavings. That's quite nice. <coughs> right, so I'm assuming that you haven't got any fancy polishers or anything yet. So I've got this beeswax furniture polish from in the house and you can use most, well any, any sort of beeswax polishes are great, this one's uh, seen better days but it'll still work. Get some, now then I'm not going to teach you that. Get a paper towel and get some of the wax onto the paper towel, rub it inside Use a paper towel because if anything gets hold of the, if, it, if you're using cloth and the machine gets hold of it, it'll rip it and it could rip your hand into the machine and spin it around and break your wrist or something. So we're just getting, we've got this, we've got this rain at 800 now, and what it's doing is heating, the friction is heating the wax up. Just put a quite a nice shine on it without a lot of effort or any expensive uh, waxes and finishes. There we put it on, we get a clean piece. Again, we're using paper, paper towels. And we're just gonna puff it up with this. 
check on the paper if it's dirty, turn it round. And there we are. We have got, still got that crack in there, which is a bit of a shame, but for demonstration purposes, uh, uh, that's quite a nice finish. So, take it off the lathe, take the screws out, I'll find the screwdriver. If you want to sand that up, if you've got the sander, uh, that's great. Um, um, just give it a, you could just even give it a light, a light sand over so, so you leave some of the cuts and leave it sort of looking a little bit rustic. Take off the edges, a bit of a light, light sand over and then you can, like there, Got a pencil mark there. Try and get rid of that a bit. And then you can you can just go over it with a bit of the wax again. That's not going to make it super smooth and shiny, but but will see that feels it will feel nice to the touch. Same on the top of the other side, obviously. The disadvantage of this method is that the bottom we finish up with four holes in there <coughs> that we can't really get rid of other than filling them or something. But you could put a piece of felt or something on the bottom just to cover that up. And you've got what basically is a nice, nice rustic looking bowl. And if that was my first bowl, I'd be more than happy.